In this video, we are going to evaluate integrals using integration by parts. The formula for integration by parts is as follows. Given the antiderivative of f of x, g prime of x dx, if I were to let u equal f of x, then du will equal to f prime of x dx. And if I let dv equal g prime of x dx, then v will be the antiderivative of dv, which is g of x. So we can say that the integral of f of x g prime of x dx is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. In some cases, we have to apply integration by parts more than once. The idea is to choose the right value for u and dv such that when integration by parts is applied, we obtain an integral that is easier to evaluate. I have three examples where each one is different, so be sure to watch until the very end because I will show you how to choose the best value for u and dv in any case. For the first example, we have the integral of t squared times cosine of t dt. So we are going to apply integration by parts. So I will choose u to be t squared. So if I let u equal t squared, then du will equal to 2t dt. And if I choose dv to equal cosine of t dt, then v will be the antiderivative of cosine of t dt, which is sine of t. So the integral of t squared cosine of t dt is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So this will equal to so u times v, so that's going to be t squared sine of t minus the integral of v du. So I'm multiplying sine of t times 2t dt. So I'm going to write 2t first. So I have 2t and then I'll write sine of t dt. Now we need to apply integration by parts yet again. Also note that anytime you have an integral that does not include a lower and upper limit, you must always include plus C in your final answer. So I will include plus C at the very end once my answer has been simplified. So applying integration by parts again, I am going to let u equal 2t, then du is equal to 2dt. And if I let dv equal sine of t dt, then v will equal to negative cosine of t because the antiderivative of sine of t is negative cosine of t. So I can rewrite this as t squared sine of t minus the integral of 2t sine of t dt is equal to t squared sine of t minus uv minus the integral of v du. So this will equal to t squared sine of t minus u times v, which is negative 2t cosine of t, and then we have minus the integral of v du. So I'll say 
2 dt times negative cosine of t. So that will be negative 2 cosine of t dt. And now I will simplify this a little more. So we have that this is equal to t squared sine of t minus negative 2t cosine of t. Two negatives make a positive, so we have plus the integral of 2 cosine of t dt. And now I will distribute the negative sign here. So we have t squared sine of t plus 2t cosine of t minus the integral of 2 cosine of t dt. Now we do not have to apply integration by parts at this step because we have removed all variables of t. So I'm just going to take the antiderivative of 2 cosine of t, which is 2 sine of t. So we have that this is equal to t squared sine of t plus 2t cosine of t minus 2 sine of t, and of course, don't forget to include plus c. And here is the answer to the first example. For the next example, we have the integral from 1 to 2 of x ln of x dx. This time, I'm going to choose u to be ln of x. So I will let u equal ln of x, then du is equal to 1 over x dx, and dv will equal to x dx, which means that v will equal to x squared over 2. So the integral from 1 to 2 of x ln of x dx is equal to uv evaluated from 1 to 2 minus the integral from 1 to 2 of v du. So this is equal to u times v, so we have x squared over 2 ln of x evaluated from 1 to 2 minus the integral from 1 to 2 of v du. So v is x squared over 2 and du is 1 over x dx. Simplifying this, we have that this is equal to x squared over 2 ln of x evaluated from 1 to 2 minus the integral from 1 to 2. Here, x in the denominator will cancel with one of the x's in the numerator, so we have x over 2 dx. Now I will evaluate this integral, so we have that this is equal to x squared over 2 ln of x minus, I will evaluate it all at one time, so we have minus x squared over 4, all evaluated from 1 to 2. So this is equal to 2 squared over 2 ln of 2 minus... 2 squared over 4 minus, now plugging in the lower limit, we have 1 squared over 2 ln of 1 minus 1 squared over 4. And simplifying, we have that this is equal to 4 over 2 ln of 2 minus 4 over 4 minus and ln of 1 is 0, so 0 times 1 half is 0, so we have 0 minus 1 over 4. And now I will distribute the negative sign here and reduce the fraction 4 over 2. So we have 2 ln of 2 
minus four over four plus one over four. And now I'm just going to simplify a little more. So this will be ln of two squared minus three over four. So what I did here was I applied a log property because we know that a ln of b is equal to ln of b raised to the a power. And that's what I did. I applied this log property and here I just combined my fractions. So this will equal to ln of four minus three over four. And here is my final answer. Remember that since we have lower and upper limits, we do not have to include plus C in this case. For the last example, we have the integral of sine of X cosine of X DX. So I'm going to choose U to be sine of X. So I'm going to let U equal sine of X then du will equal to cosine of x dx. And dv will equal to cosine of x dx. So v will equal to sine of x. So the integral of sine of x cosine of x dx is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So the integral of sine of x cosine of x dx is equal to u times v, so that's sine x times sine x minus the integral of v du. So we have sine x cosine x dx. So sine x cosine x dx. Now I'm just going to simplify a little bit. So we have the integral of sine of x cosine of x dx is equal to sine squared of x minus the integral of sine of x cosine of x dx. Now notice that we have a repeated integral and particularly we have an integral that we originally started with. So we have the integral of sine x, cosine x, dx on the left side, and we have the integral of sine x, cosine x, dx on the right side. So I can simply add them together. So if I add the integral of sine x, cosine x, dx to both sides, then we will get the integral of sine x, cosine x dx plus another integral of sine x cosine x dx is equal to sine squared of x. And now I can add these together. So this will be two times the integral of sine x cosine x dx is equal to sine squared of x. And now I can divide both sides by two. So we get integral of sine x cosine x dx is equal to sine squared x over two. And don't forget plus c. And we have on the left side, the integral that we originally started with, and we solved for that interval to get our answer. Now you could have chose u to be cosine of x in the beginning. And if you would have done that, then u would be cosine of x, and my dv would be sine of x dx. So what you would get after going through the entire process, you would get the integral of sine of x cosine of x dx is equal to negative cosine squared of x over two plus c. And both answers are correct. 
If you were to graph sine squared of x over 2 and negative cosine squared of x over 2, you would see that they are the exact same graph, but they will only differ by a vertical shift of c. So by including plus c, you are accounting for any vertical shifts to lay the graphs directly on top of each other. And of course, if you had upper and lower limits, then you would see that you would not need to include plus C and you would in fact have the exact same value in your final answer. Now let's discuss how to choose the best choice for you in DV such that after applying integration by parts, you will obtain an integral that is easier to evaluate. Well, in regular cases, you will see problems like example one. The value that you choose for you, take a close look at that value and see if you were to differentiate over and over and over again, would you in fact obtain zero eventually? So if I were to take t squared and take the derivative of t squared, that would be 2t. But if I take the derivative again, that would give me 2. And if I were to take the derivative again, it would be 0. So this was the best choice for you because I'm trying to decrease my powers of t. And the best choice for dv would be the value that if you were to integrate over and over and over and over and over again, you would eventually get back your original function. So if I take cosine of t and I take the antiderivative, that would be sine of t. But then if I take the antiderivative of sine of t, I would get negative cosine of t. And if I were to take the antiderivative of negative cosine of t, I would get negative sine of t. And if I take the antiderivative of negative sine of t, then I would get cosine of t. And notice that we get the original function. Examples of this type of antiderivative would be sine, cosine, and e to the x. Now, in special cases, you will see an integral set up like example two, where you have a log in your integrand. So if you have a log in your integrand, completely dismiss all rules previously stated and automatically let u be the log function. Because when I take its derivative, I get rid of the log and choose dv to be whatever is left. And another special case is when you have a problem like example three, where both functions will return back to its original function, whether you take the derivative repeatedly or the antiderivative repeatedly. So in this case, you will end up having a repeated integral in particularly an integral that you originally started with. So in this case, you can choose u or dv to be whatever function you wish. And once you see the repeated integral, you will simply solve for that integral and obtain your answer. And that is how you evaluate integrals using integration by parts. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.